before we move to the first keynote discussion, two uh, points of attention. One is the hashtag to tweet about this conference. It's hashtag IFF Paris. And that will be absolutely wonderful if you can give this uh, event as much resonance as possible on social media by tweeting your comments or even pictures. The second aspect is that you will see on the reverse side of your badge a QR code enabling you to download the app of the event, and that's uh, also something new. Uh, it will allow you to, of course, have details about the uh, two days. Uh, but also, it will allow you to network. You've been given a six-digit uh, password, I think, in your invitation. And once you log into the app, uh, it can be used as a, as a social space to network with other attendees. Now, without further ado, let us welcome our uh, keynote discussion uh, panelists, uh, Stephen Major and uh, Robert Ophel, respectively, from ESMA and AMF. Okay, so um, we're going to set the stage uh, for today in this discussion because uh, the plenary sessions will cover uh, sustainable finance, uh, financial innovation, and other topics like that. So let me start with you, Stephen. Um, Capital Markets Union was one of the key projects of uh, the outgoing uh, European legislature following the new commission and uh, uh, the parliamentary elections. What is going to breathe new life into the Capital Markets Union project in the new legislature? Thank you very much, uh, Adrian, for, for that question. But let me thank, first of all, Europe, Europlus for inviting me. It's very good to, to be at this place uh, and also to hear uh, the very optimistic uh, opening remarks by, by the chairman. So thank you very much for inviting me. Um, I think on the uh, Capital Markets Union, uh, it, was, it was presented as a, a new program by the current, still current commission. Uh, but I think it's important to realize that Europe has already been working basically for 40 years uh, on uh, integrating the European capital markets, strengthening the European capital markets. And I think the arguments are very strong for doing that. First of all, we need to have a better balance between the banking sector and, let's say, the non-banking sector or the capital markets. Uh, I think you can make a very clear argument that if there is a better balance, is that it makes the system more stable. Uh, but I think it's also very important to develop the capital markets to get, let's say, higher equity levels in, in the system. Uh, we know that a financial system where the banks play a very central role is that it's more debt-oriented. We know that uh, the high debt levels in Europe is an issue. Uh, but it also relates to the other side in the sense that the households if they have a tendency to save through deposits, is that ultimately they get a very low return on their savings. You know, we need to have a financial system uh, where there is more participation by households, by end investors and retail investors um, in the capital market because ultimately they need to pay their houses, they need to pay their education, they need to pay their retirement, um, and only through participation in the capital market you can get a, a better result. And finally, of course, there was also the very clear argument by, uh, by the chairman uh, around the fact that uh, Brexit uh, will be happening. Uh, like him, I was, I'm not in favor of that, but it's clearly is that the, there will be more barriers between the UK and the EU27. So it's important that we uh, develop uh, the capital markets in the, in the EU27. Um, the way you framed the question by, I think you said something like, breathe new life into it, uh, suggests a bit of a disappointment. Uh, I must say that if I, I look back, uh, there's areas where Europe has been very successful in the capital markets. Uh, if you look at asset management, we have a strong uh, asset management sector in the EU27. I think also if you look at trading venues, that is really uh, a, a European uh, competitive um, uh, landscape. Uh, corporate debt issuance has been very strong. And so the question is really, what are the areas where we need to focus on for, for the next term? Uh, and obviously it would be for the Commission to, um, uh, to undertake that. The two areas where I would focus on is, first of all, is, is going back again to the equity levels and everything in the area around, let's say, small caps or uh, the uh, SMEs that are about to ready to go to the capital markets. If you look at the, the, the largest um, uh, listers, there is a you know, reasonably integrated European capital market, but there are especially problems uh, around the, um, the small caps and the, uh, the non-listed ones that are basically about to be ready. 
uh, to go for a listing. But also look at the flip side is the participation by households in the capital market. We need to make sure that uh, bigger parts of European families, European households participate in the capital market. Uh, is that they, for example, more easily buy either directly an equity or a bond or, or buy a fund. Uh, if you look at the numbers in Europe, the, the median savings in Europe, for example, are higher than in the US. Um, um, but the, the figures also show is that the uh, typical household in Europe is 30% in, in cash and deposits, uh, and there is no or much more limited participation in funds and, and equity and bonds. Thank you. Let me turn to you, uh, Robert. Uh, in the international competition between financial centers globally to attract uh, the best opportunities and more capital, how uh, can Europe be less naive and more vigilant in terms of uh, ensuring a level playing field versus the United States and versus Asia? And what can the regulator's role be in this regard? I'm not sure we should put Asia and, and the U.S. On the, on the same level. The U.S. is clearly of a different nature uh, with uh, a strong, profitable, largely ring-fenced domestic market and a dominant currency above all, the U.S. dollar. And despite these competitive advantages, we should acknowledge that the EU remains currently well placed in this competition you've just mentioned. But it's largely due to the city of London. So the challenge in front of us is to build up a competitive environment at the EU27 level, attractive for third countries, investors and financial intermediaries, but at the same time, which will favor the emergence or the strengthening of top European global players with a strong and profitable pan-European footprint on a worldwide dimension. Right now, at a world level, we are not in the five tops in, in, uh, institutions. We have no, nobody there in the top five. five. That's an issue. Regulation can help, obviously, but it's only part of the answer alongside other legal framework, such as uh, bankruptcy, competition, taxation, or even monetary policy, with the euro as a possible important asset in the competition if its international role is increased. For financial regulation, the answer can't be a relaxation of the requirements in order to attract international capital in this competition you've just mentioned. Actually, I see three main intertwined challenges in the regulatory framework in this competition between regions. First of all, we need at the AU27 to finalize a fully fledged single rule book. More European with less national options. We started with directive with minimum harmonization to go to maximum harmonization. We have to go to regulation directly enforceable at the European level. Second, we should have a rule book which is less complex and allowing rapid evolution. It means less <laughs> detailed level one regulation, more put in at level two and from level two at level three, meaning at the ESMA level in, in, in our case. We should be more reactive in this uh, single rule book. And third, we need to have an homogeneous stance vis-a-vis -vis third countries with appropriate equivalence and no longer, in, in case you do not have equivalence, no longer national regimes which currently deliver a patchwork of situation in the EU. That's the main point I have in mind. And finally, regulation is nothing without supervision and enforcement. It means that the single rule book should be enforced on an homogeneous manner in the EU 27 
That's key because serious institutions need serious supervisors. Thank you. In order to be very respectful of the timekeeping this morning, because we have a very packed schedule, I just have time for two quick follow-up questions, one each. Stephen, um, how can a regulator such as ESMA help uh, foster financial innovation while protecting both the interests of the industry, of course, that wants financial innovation, but the interests also of uh, protecting citizens and savers on the other hand? How to strike the right balance? Let, let me first say that I agree with everything that Robert said, so uh, let's get that uh, off the table very quickly. Uh, I think on technology very quickly. Um, first of all, it's important, as you would expect from a regulator, that we focus on risks normally. I think uh, financial innovation and new technologies are areas where we can also really help the end investor, the retail investor. We can see it, for example, in, in our banking, in the banking area where let's say making payments has become so much easier and so much faster, but also much more transparent uh, because of innovation than compared to the systems that we had until, um, until recently. I think, so a, a very good balance between, let's say the benefits uh, to, the, to, the, um, uh, to the end consumer uh, versus the risk of innovation is, is very important. Um, the other element and key element I think is taking a European or even a global perspective uh, innovation is very typically uh, not at a national level. We can see it now how with the Libra um, uh, system or proposal by Facebook, how quickly that is instantaneously a global issue. And I think that is the, we, we cannot do these things at a national level. This needs to be done at a European or a global uh, level. And uh, ESMA contributes to that, for example, by achieving, uh, trying to achieve a common assessment of new crypto innovations. We have a specific group going across the member states that assessing new innovations in the area of crypto assets precisely to get consistency across the member states. Great, thank you. And, and Robert, quickly, just one last question. The Paris Financial Center, where we are today, is, of course, extremely well positioned in terms of sustainable finance. I'm wondering, what do you see your role is in this regard? We are indeed very well positioned, but fortunately, I would say, there is a stimulating competition inside Europe for this leading role. And what the most important point is, is that is the position of, of Europe in the world. And it's important that we keep this leading role in sustainable finance. We have quite a unique momentum right now. We should keep it. And in that perspective, regulator has a key role to play, both by enacting the appropriate regulation and there is still a lot to do. We are at the middle of the road in many issues. Uh, everyone knows the taxonomy issue. There is the AU eco label, which is very important. Non-financial reporting remains to be harmonized. And uh, just mentioned Patrick de Cambour uh, uh, report, which has just been released. Uh, sustainable related disclosure in financial sectors and green indexes, they need the proper technical standards. That's an issue for ESMA to, 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 come, to come in. And there is a need to have a, a, a regulation and oversight of third parties, certificatory firms, and non-financial rating agencies. That's, that's, uh, that's good on the way, but uh, it's necessary to finalize it because right now we suffer from a, an overabundance of standards, overabundance of labels, overabundance of metrics, and the regulation should clarify the landscape to allow a fair comparability. And on top of that, as already mentioned, the most important thing is enforcement implementation, because there is a need to give credibility to the, to the whole project and which relies on the seriousness of the supervision and the capacity of avoiding greenwashing. I can assure you that the French authorities and my colleagues from the SCPR is on the same line. We will, we will de de dedicate ourselves to avoiding these dangers. Robert, Stephen, thank you both very much. Let's give them a warm round of applause. Thank you. Thank you.